And it's extraordinary that the likes of Lloyd George and Collins w- would be able to sit down in, uh, together in, in 10 Downing Street, where a year before yeah. they would have almost been going to kill each other. So the treaty, it, it takes the, back what the British are prepared to offer. They're not yeah. prepared to give the six counties yeah. because of the large number of Protestants in the north, yeah. that, those six counties. But there were... There were going to be discussions after the Free State was founded where they could have talked about the border areas and, and, and readjusted Absolutely, the border, yeah. wasn't there? They, they had, they, Lloyd George and Collins had planned to set up a boundary commission to review the border. But, uh, I mean, Collins was ahead of his time in that regard. He understood that you, you couldn't no. con- force people into a political settlement no. that, that they didn't, uh, that they were against, and they were prepared to work on that. And that's why he considered the treaty a stepping stone. Yes. But there was a minority who viewed it as a betrayal, and that then ultimately led within six months to the outbreak of civil war. Which, like all civil war, any war is bad. Yeah. But a civil war pitches family against family, brother and sister against brother and sister, father against son. It's so divisive, isn't it? And, and Collins, Collins within, uh, within a few weeks of the start of that civil war, was dead. So he's dead at the age of 31. And it's important to remember that. He's a, he's a relatively young man. And in the space of a few years, he's achieved so much. So really, in a sense, Collins' historical role had only really just begun. And the, the tragedy was that although the Free State won the Civil War, yeah. that the peace thereafter, the supporters of De Valera and De Valera became the architect of, of, of Ireland really till the 60s and 70s. Absolutely. And, in, and, and ironically, his great rival De Valera adopted pretty much his strategy of stepping stone, a stepping stone to freedom. And, and it's a testament to the founders of the state that within a few years of the end of the Civil War, the losing side in that yeah. civil war, there was a democratic election and there was a peaceful transition of power. Now, is that why Collins was then really pushed out from yeah. Irish schools and Irish history? Yeah, he because he was uh, he was he was the central figure. There's a real real sense, and I certainly believe it, because uh, even when I was a child, I was hardly aware of Michael Collins. But nowadays, uh, he's probably to to teenagers and the younger generation yeah. the most famous figure of Irish history because he's a figure who gives hope. Uh, he gives inspiration, but he's also a figure who, 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 who learned to accept his mistakes and was prepared to develop. One last question before I move on to Nora, and it's a difficult question for one historian to ask another historian about what may somebody from the past have thought about something that happened today, but I'm going to ask the question. When the Queen recently went yeah. to Ireland, my Kay's family were ringing us up, so excited but also emotional. I'm getting emotional talking about it now as somebody that loves the Irish and is a proud Englishman. The way our people can come together. The Queen's visit just seemed to just end hundreds of years of of upset and anger and bitterness. And and, and uh, the Queen herself made that remark in her speech in Dublin about the, the errors and the mistakes yeah. that had been made. Yeah. And, and we'll, we have to accept it that we each inflicted terrible yeah. uh, pain on each other in, yeah. in, in the course of our history. But we've now come to a mutual respect. And I think the symbolic moment was when she sat down to Taoiseach Enda Kenny under a portrait of yeah. Michael Collins. Yeah. And that, I think that's, that's, the, I I think that's the, the central moment. Uh, that that's, uh, a, the, a, a that mo- was only in May of this year. May of this year, and there's a photo here with the Duke of Edinburgh and Absolutely. Her Majesty the Queen with Enda Kenny, the Taoiseach, the Prime Minister yeah. of the Republic of Ireland, and a portrait of Michael Collins, which thank, uh, thanks to Martin and Peter and Bill, we've got a copy of to sh- here today. Yeah, and, and, and I know for a lot of people in England, uh, they may have difficulty trying to reconcile the idea that was he a terrorist? I mean, but but the, the, they shouldn't be coloured by the view of what happened in Northern Ireland in the seventies no. and eighties, and let that influence and, their and, view. And, and, you know, it's a different I, time. It was a different time, and, and Ireland had been had its own Parliament since mm. eighteen oh one. It lost out so much yeah. from the Act of Union. Absolutely. Thank you for for the explanation. Uh, can I come to you, Nora yes, Owen, the grandniece of Michael? Con- Obviously, you didn't know him. He was dead no. years before you were born. Yeah. Well, what did what did you grow up knowing of Michael? Well, not not a lot. Uh, I mean, just very quickly on something Michael said there. Could I just remind yes, you what, what Churchill said when yes. Michael Collins died? He said. He was an Irish patriot of exceptional valour who was honest and trustworthy. That's praise indeed, yeah. I mean, when they were sitting across the table from each other, but they seemed to recognise in each other... Churchill was a quintessential English patriot, yes, so yes. he would recognise that Absolutely. in somebody else. Absolutely, and Michael Collins' pragmatism in, in eventually having the wit and yeah. cleverness to say, thus far,
far we've got yeah. with the treaty we're not going to get uh, all of it but I must do this even if I'm signing my own death warrant as I was growing up my, my late mother who was Michael Collins's niece my grandfather was Johnny Collins Michael's eldest brother and the family didn't talk about him. It was a very painful set of memories they oh. had because my mother was a 10-year-old child when the Black and Tans arrived to their house and they... They were farmers, uh, were they not? Farmers, and they had a house in a place called Sam's Cross and they arrived to burn the house down as a reprisal for some war- something that had happened. And um, there was a very young housekeeper in the house, Peg, who was about 22 or 23, minding these eight children aged from six months to 12 years of age. And she said to them, their mother is dying in the upstairs bedroom. And whatever bit of humanity was left, the, the person in charge said, well, we won't burn the house down now, but we will come back when the woman is dead. Yeah. And three months later, she was dead. So here is this house being set on fire with the help under coercion of neighbours who were made gather straw and hay put it around the house pour petrol on it and light the fire and the one story my mother did share with us not till we were quite old I mean we were well past our teenage years and she said she remembers the fire she remembers being outside they're all being held back so they wouldn't run back in and she was terrified because her school bag was still in the house and she was afraid of the teacher the next day would say where's your homework she didn't understand that nobody would be looking for her homework when her house was being burnt down and she tried to run back into the house to collect her school bag and of course she was stopped and she remembers then a bit later Collins arriving they had moved into some kind of outhouse yeah. for the time being and Collins arriving standing looking at the ruin of the house and saying they know how to hurt me because he wasn't a married man he yeah. didn't these were all his, this really, his, his children family. this was his family and of course my mother's father my grandfather was on his way from a county council meeting in, Cam- in Cork um, on that day that the house was burnt but he was arrested halfway home so he never actually got back to the house So here are these eight orphans, really. Mm. The mother is dead. Their father has been arrested and sent to Spike Island Prison. So they were all scattered around. My mother and her older sister were sent off to the Irish College. Many of your listeners may have known about Ring Irish College. They were sent off for a year there to learn Irish and to really border because there was no home. Mm. And other members of the family were farmed out to relatives to be brought up. So when my mother talked about it, even in her later years, in her early 80s and late 70s, there would be tears in her eyes because she could remember how horrible she remembers being told never tell anybody who was in the house never tell any of your school pals that you heard a knock on the door Mm -hmm. late at night never tell them that somebody was staying in the back bedroom or or maybe you know hidden somewhere in an outhouse because they were all people who were coming and going all the time which shows the measure of the man doesn't it Nora that despite this personal tragedy he's seen his house burnt his mother died yes they waited till the mother had died yes, before they yeah. burnt the house down. His 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 family. Now this was Michael Collins. Ma- it was Michael yeah. Collins's brother's so family. His brother's yes, family. Yeah. He's seen all this happen to his brother and yeah. his family. Yeah. And yet, despite that, he, he's prepared to he reach is. out a hand. Mm. He knows that he knows diplomacy. that he knows that the time had come to stop yeah. brother killing brother and yeah. sister and, and husband and wife fighting, and I mean the bitterness of a civil war. And God knows we have them around the world. Uh, you know, if people want to learn from the bitterness of a civil war and the kind of legacy it leaves, it's really only going now. And as Michael says from his history lessons to the young people now, they see Collins as a hero, less of a Fine Gael figure yeah. versus a Fianna yeah. Fáil figure now. And th- that's virtually gone now. I mean, yes. especially yeah. the last election, isn't <laughs> yes, it? it is. You know, when Fianna Fáil... I mean, from a very <laughs> early age, I mean, remember Michael Collins' own father was 60 when he married. He married a 21-year-old yeah. woman and then all his children were born after he was yeah. 60. He was 74 when Collins was, was born and when he was dying, he Michael Collins was seven years of age and apparently there'd been a great bond between father and son and every time... The father walked the land. This little boy was with him the Mm. whole time. And he looked at his son. Now, some say it was his uncle Paddy, but they said, look after this child. He'll do great things for Ireland at some stage.